All right. Hello, everyone. And thank you for checking in. I had a feeling you would. Pretty wild day in the market, but this just tell or this just shows us markets can go down. And when people get really euphoric like they've been, when the Magnificent Seven becomes a household name, <clears throat> when you have all these extreme readings going on at various places, that's just a stage up for a move lower. And really what happens is we can sit here and talk about the news, but ultimately the market is about supply and demand. And if people are really bullish and positive, what do they do? They invest all their funds. And at some point, they run out of money to buy more. And then the market stops going higher because it's run out of buyers. So we saw today in the uh, Bank of America fund manager uh, report that it's the lowest cash levels in I don't know how many years, but it's getting close to what we call a contrarian signal. Money managers typically have a little bit of cash in their portfolio. If they think the market is going to go up, what do they do? They spend that cash. So to get to a typical portfolio in the institutional world where you're just about 4% cash, that shows potentially extreme bullishness. A typical cash holding is about 5%. Now, it might not sound like a lot, but if you think about it, uh, 4% is, what, 20% below 5%. So it's so it's it's meaningful. All right, so here's um, the S&P. Really not a surprise. I have no idea what the hell is going to go on with the uh, AI stocks in the future. I, I mean, I don't know where NVIDIA is going to be in a year. No one does. But I think that we're on the cusp of a reversal that could be pretty tradable. Sorry, so here's the S&P. It was now 1.4%. Really no rebound in the in the aftermarket. Uh, one of the things I really want you to draw your attention to. Now, back in my. One of the things that you need to know as a trader, OK, is you got to have a defensive mindset or, or a reactionary mindset. You can't show up every day if you're a day trader. I mean, there are different types of styles, but just say you're a day trader or a short term trader, which most of my students are. Have, having an opinion could be very detrimental because if you have an opinion like, oh, the market's going to go up, the market's going to go down, you tell your friends, you might ignore stuff that could show signals that are contrary to your opinion. And you may not even realize that you're doing it. It's It could be a subconscious thing. Anyway, here's what we need. One of the things we need to focus on. This is the bond ETF, which I follow or we follow. Because we're all community here. Oh, yeah. So please make sure you uh, you join. And we're going to be sending out newsletters. I got my uh, sub stack. You can find me on there. You can find me on. I'm still going to call it Twitter. I know people call it X. But I still call Facebook, Facebook. And I still call Google, Google. Old habits are hard to break. Now, what happened here? The market goes lower. It gets to what we call support. Support is a price level where there's a lot of demand. There's a lot of buyers. If a market's going lower, there's not enough demand or buyers. So the sellers are have no choice but to offer their shares out at a discount. And that forces a downtrend. But when we get to support, that changes. There's a lot of supply. I mean, sorry, there's a lot of demand. There's a lot of traders who want to buy. So markets stop going down when they get to support. And sometimes they rally off of support like this because these buyers start to sense other buyers are kind of coming into the market. And they start to worry they're going to miss out. So they start to increase the prices they're willing to pay. And we get a snowball thing. But now, back here to today, <laughs> excuse me, this support seems to have broken. And considering the move down, there's no rebound in the, pre in the aftermarket. That's what suggests to me it's going to keep going lower. Why is this important? As bond prices go down, interest rates go higher. That could be negative for the market. All that being said, uh, it's markets go down to, and in all these stocks have gone. Did you know that the value of the Magnificent Seven is greater than the value of all the stocks in Japan, Britain, 
and one of the one other country over there. I don't know. The just incredible. The value of the Magnificent Seven is greater than the entire value or the value of the entire energy sector. So we're definitely getting to extremes, but extremes can go on for a long time. Bubbles can go on for a long time. So what I tell people is if you're long, just stay long, but just be ready to react quickly because in markets like this, when the reversal comes, and it will, I don't know if it's tomorrow, I don't know if this is it, they tend to reverse quickly. It's not going to be something that's slow. All right, so let's just check a couple of things out here. So Apple's not doing much in the pre-market. It was down about 1.1% today. 1.1%, sorry. NVIDIA, eh, eh, pretty much flat today. I'm going to take a look at the 10-year yield here. Wow, look at this move higher. This is a big move here. Wow, look at that. Yields went from 415 to 431. It's huge move. Now, this if this starts to get back up into this level here where we're getting up to around five, eh, it's going to be pretty bearish for the market. So this could be the catalyst. The other catalyst we have is I mean, let's face it, I, I, as an American, I'm very concerned because it's, to me, I'm not a doctor. It's pretty clear that President Biden is having some something going on. So they might try to force him out of office somehow. Markets don't like uh, markets don't like uncertainty. So that could be bearish. We could have a terrorist attack. I mean, we have these open borders. We have all this stuff going on in the Middle East. With interest rates rising, we could have some kind of a catalyst that basically pricks the bubble. Every bubble there's ever been in history has, has blown up. That's what bubbles do. They pop. Remember, how about some of these um these cannabis stocks? I remember the cannabis stock bubble. Look at this particular stock, Aurora Cannabis. This thing was... Got up to a hundred and about fifty dollars a share. It's at thirty nine. This is this just shows you. I'm not saying Nvidia is going to go. I, and I meant thirty nine cents. I'm not saying Nvidia is going to go that lower, but things don't go up forever. It's a market. I would be positioned to the short side. Please come back and uh, check us out because I pretty much talk about the markets every day. Check out the Benzinga Trading School that that I run. We got some really cool things going on there. Uh, check out my newsletter on Substack and my Reddit group. And uh, yeah, that's it, everyone. I will talk to you tomorrow. Thanks a lot.